Welcome to Samsung Next Meets. My guest today is Jennifer Fong, Investment Associate at Brains to Ventures. So I work at B2B Partners as an investment associate. We are a venture capital fund with 450 um, million euro assets under management. We invested since 20 years uh, roughly into 160 companies across Europe. Um, and we invest in sector agnostic, early stage companies. Notable investments include, for example, Food Springs, Sum Up, or Urban Sports Club. Um, I'm responsible for sourcing, screening, structuring, investing in deals and managing the portfolio for our private investor network alongside the funds. Our angel network includes 250 investors from the old and new economy who are sharing deals with us, investing with us and supporting with due diligence um, and also the portfolio management. Um, so my immigration background starts actually with my parents being born and growing up in the midst of the Vietnam War um, with the US in the 70s. And at the same time, Germany had a very um, flourishing economy and uh, the DDR needed desperately workers. So they signed an agreement with Vietnam to bring and train people um, and in exchange those people learn German and get qualified. And my grandfather um, worked in politics, so he put my mom into his program um, and sent her when she was 17 to Germany to get her out of the mess Vietnam was in after all these years of wars um, with US, France and Japan. Um, and my parents then met in Weimar. Um, and after the fall of the wall, they actually decided to stay to enable a better future for themselves, but also for their children. And a few years later, I was born in Eisenach. Yeah, I speak where, um, Vietnamese, so my parents were super strict um, at home and they didn't want us obviously to um, forget our mother tongue, so yeah. Um, looking at my path, I was growing up the first 18 years in two cultures and I can di definitely identify myself Vietnamese and German. Um, so there are certain values in the Vietnamese culture such as family, respect for elderly, importance on education and knowledge and hard work. And that's something which I can identify with. Um, and of course I cook from time to time Vietnamese dishes and talk also in Vietnamese with my parents. And on the other hand, I can be very German, especially in the professional context. Um, so I'll, in regards of being very straightforward, um, truthful, independent and efficient. And one of my favorite dishes is actually um, Klöse with Rotkraut. <laughs> so that's also something very German about me. Um, yeah, and after, after leaving my hometown, I actually spent, I think, six years living, working and studying in six different countries, um, such as France, Singapore, Spain, Mexico. And actually, I also identified partly with those places. So in the end, I don't really like the question people sometimes ask me, like, do you feel more German or Vietnamese? Because it implies you can be either only this or that, when I actually really feel a mix of everything. Um, so, yeah. Um, it's a tough question, in my honest opinion, and I think it has two sides of the same coin. So starting with the challenging side. Um, so looking at the background of my parents who came as guest workers to Germany from a socioeconomic status um, and them also facing ethnic discrimination in Germany sometimes, I would say not that it hindered my career progression, but it definitely didn't give me a head start. Um, and in the sectors I've worked so far in, 
So I work in consulting where I was advising CEOs of large corporations um, regarding digital strategies. Um, and also now in venture capital where I attend, um, when I attend meetings. Most of the time I'm the only woman under 30 years old and a person of color. So by demographic characteristics, I'm already very different. Um, I never felt open racism during my professional career so far, but I felt often very subtle prejudice, sexism and being underestimated. Um, so I think that's something which is definitely on the challenge, challenging side. And on the encouraging side and looking at the other side of the coin, um, I think looking at it from a value-driven perspective, it actually really fueled my progression in the sense that my parents were um, putting so much emphasis on education and hard work. Um, so everything they earned, it went into my education, which is why I had the means to attend the best schools, um, universities around the world and in Germany, as well as doing internships, um, which they financed also. Um, and on, on top of that, my parents always told me when I was younger that I had to work twice as harder as my peers um, because they felt the racial inequality, um, which they obviously didn't want for me. So in the end, I would say to sum up the question, I was privileged with great parents and access to education. And my immigration background made me work twice as hard, being ambitious, having grit and gratitude at the same time, which catapulted me in the end towards the position and career and also life where I am actually today. So yeah, to answer that question. That's also a tough question I'm trying to um, figure out and solve, but obviously there are different factors, right? from historical reasons, systematic reasons, um, which you as a single person don't really have um, leverage on. But the reasons I think f um, on the lack of diverse founders is, um, first of all, what I see is um, that there's a lack of network, obviously. So people op are often not in the same circles. They didn't attend the right schools. Um, so that's something which, which leads to that. Um, then the lack of role models, as we also just discussed about, um, if you don't see anyone who looks like you, who thinks like you, why should you be inspired to, to take that step? Um, and regarding women, obviously, they, it starts already in university. They study um, less of women study uh, STEM subjects. So that leads to that less people or less women are in the tech industry in general. And the last yeah. reason is um, I had, but probably other immigrants not, is the access to education and, and financial means. Um, so I think that's on the founder side. And I think that's very close, um, yeah, interlinked with the venture capital world. It's even more highly networked driven. So if you're a woman or belong to a minority group, I think you usually don't have the means or context to crack into the sector. Um, and historically, most of the general partners in a fund worked before as a banker, consultant, or they were a successful founder. Um, so that's why also the majority is, um, is, um, yeah, is male and middle-aged. Um, and that's the reality right now. So how, can we implement changes regarding that? Yeah. So as I said, I think role models is something which is super important to create awareness that there are not only outlier cases, such as maybe us, few people right now in the scene, but that there are more and that you're able to, to do the same um, career path. I think it's a lot about transparency and data and speaking up about uncomfortable topics. Um, so for example, um, right now I initiated a study with Grace Accelerator. It's an accelerator focusing on female entrepreneurs to really understand how female entrepreneurs see the fundraising process um, with venture capital funds in Germany. Because I couldn't get my head around why every partner says that they want to invest more into women. But in the end, 
the data shows that only 2% of the money flows into female-led startups. So as I said, there are probably a bunch of different reasons. But I think one where we have leverage on as um, venture capital investors is our fundraising process. So just, you know, bringing more transparency to that, um, collecting data. Um, and I think the last part is community and networks to create also those kind of circles and, and helping each other. I think that's something um, super, super relevant. So I myself, I actively source and screen companies um, from, I would say, rather unobvious sources. So I try to expand my network outside of the typical um, VC funds and communities where you are introducing each other yeah, quite in the same, um, in the same circuits. So, for example, I work at Ready School, which is a nonprofit um, school teaching refugees um, digital skills. And um, cool. yeah, basically, that's something I would say is a very different kind of network or circle, but still super relevant. So, yeah, just trying to look beyond that and really being active um, in, in, in that sense and not waiting um for for the next big unicorn founded by a yeah diverse founder coming to you by an introduction um yeah say so i think some of the most successful entrepreneurs um especially in the us are actually immigrants so ellen musk Ariana huffington steve jobs and the reason I think, um, or why, why is that like that is, I think immigrants especially have certain qualities or characteristics, uh, let's call it like that, such as persistence, they're um, adapting to new environments very quickly, they think globally, um, they're resilient, and they know often the value of money. Um, so those are super strong qualities also for a founder. Um, and I think the best is really to channel and use those characteristics which make you different. Um, that's an advice I would give, yeah. So one who came though into my mind, as, at least for me as a venture capitalist, is um, Luciana Lisandro. And um, she's great. She came from a small hundred thousand inhabitants town in Romania and um, studied in the US, worked her way upwards in Morgan Stanley and then um, worked for the last years as a partner at Excel um, and actually now opened um, the first a European office for Sequoia Capital. So I think that's a remarkable journey and I think we need more um, of those kind of examples.